Thank you very much for downloading this featured content podcast here from Solihull Radio and Studio 148. Today we are joined by Paul Tovey, the group leader in highways management for our area, and Councillor Ken Hawkins, whose remit, obviously, as we all know, is environment and highways. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent stuff. Now, um, you have been uh, talking to us and having some chats, and I think what we should be doing is using our Solihull Radio podcast service to communicate some of the things that are going on in our area. Uh, Because if people understand a little bit more about what the master plan is, I think they would have a different perspective on the long-term goals. So, Paul, tell us a little bit about your background working uh, with the team here in the council and working with Ken. And uh, tell us a little bit about what the master plan is, because I've got some questions for you a little bit later that uh, I'm hoping you're going to shed some light on. So what, what exactly do you do for the council? OK, so uh, as part of the, the team, um, we manage the traffic signals on the highway. We manage all the roadworks that go on the highway. We oversee developments that come forward through the planning process to try and deliver an efficient and reliable journey time. That's the key message we're trying to get out there, that things are reliable and to, to respond to the incidents when they happen to get the network back to its actual capacity. Right, great stuff. So uh, you're the sort of, you as a member of the team, you're the ones that do the roadworks and the, uh, the maintenance in the school holidays? At peak times? We do maintenance all <laughs> throughout the year, I'm afraid. <laughs> no. But we try and do the difficult jobs in the school holidays. I agree, yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. So um, are you, along with Ken, the, the sort of person that goes, right, this is our budget, these are the people that we need to employ to maintain and do all these different projects, or are you more strategic? Are you more uh, of the things like... Um, you know, why are we building that road there? Why have we changed those traffic lights from a roundabout? Or is that your... Uh, uh, we, we certainly are more operational on the day-to-day okay. front, but we do feed into the planning process, mm. yeah, which, okay. is, which is going on all the time. And, and I'm afraid that's responding to what the private sector is driving in, in Soul Hill. And we've got a lot of growth planned, as you'll see. You'll no doubt come back to in a much Yeah, shortly. exactly. Now, Ken... Your uh, your remit is environment and uh, and highways. What are you seeing out there? How long have you been involved in the environment and highways uh, uh, sort of uh, stuff at the uh, the council? Well, I took over the uh, the cabinet role in May of this year, but I've been a councillor for mm. about seventeen years, yeah, yeah. and I've had various roles in that time. Um, um, so, consequently, taking on this role, it, 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 it's exciting because I've never actually had, had responsibility for highways before. So. Uh, the, the important thing is, is, is really to ensure that, it, as a council, we, we operate within our means. Mm-hmm. So finance does come into it. But it's also to ensure that, that our, our roads and highways are, are fit for purpose uh, and, um, and ensure, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day our, uh, our highways, how, how quick we, we move our traffic, does affect the, the economics of mm-hmm. not only for Sully but for the region. That's right, and that's one of the main drivers, isn't it? We get a lot of um, sort of transient traffic in to go for shopping and leisure and things like that. So during the morning rush hours, it's from from my perspective, moving from one side of Solihull to the other, that's a half an hour, forty minute drive, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So how are you strategically managing what's going on with the increase of cars and, uh, and, and public transport systems? Sprint, for instance, if that's going to come online pretty soon. How is that going to make my journey easier, less stressful, uh, and, and make me more functional in the workplace? Okay. The only way you're going to do that is by looking at the information that's out there, mm-hmm. planning your journeys better, even thinking about travelling differently on occasions. Yeah. The sustainable mo- modes of transport, the bus, the walking, the cycling, those are the, mo- the modes of transport we are trying to actively promote. And that's where we'll make that difference. You see the difference in the school holidays, mm-hmm. and there's only 10% less traffic on the road network during the school holidays, and that 10% makes a big difference to your journey time. Yeah. But the key message is that reliability. Think about travelling at a different time if you can, and plan your journey. There's lots of information out there that people don't use, unfortunately. We really do need to promote that to find out where the incidents are and where the delays are that we can go alternative routes. Excellent. I've seen recently along Monks Path Hall Road that you've created a new pathway. Now, is that a shared pathway space for cyclists, walkers and, and things like that, Ken? That is, and that's a, that's a great innovation. That's through uh, our Wildlife Ways project, which is go through most of the borough. 
uh, it started off in, uh, well, one of the early ones was, was the Monks Fathall Road, which butts my ward. Mm. And that is a shared, a shared footpath. Um, so I use it myself to mm. cycle to meetings. And, and Paul mentioned about behavioural change. Um, and I've started cycling to, um, because I can use that, hot that road. road yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I've cycled to meetings now, and I've actually challenged fellow councillors to actually just cycle to, to next week's council meeting. Great stuff. Now, Paul, take um, take that on board. When are we going to get rid of those silly half-speed humps halfway down Yoxall Road and uh, all of those sort of places that basically just damage cars? Uh, we went through a, a vogue at the time back in the early 90s of putting vertical traffic calming measures in. There are hundreds of them around the borough. Um, I'm not saying we're going to take them away overnight, but there's certainly a look at every time we come to maintain those roads, we are reassessing to see if they're still appropriate. Okay. And and are you seeing a lot of, and Ken, this is probably for you, seeing it uh, towards into the council, are you seeing a lot of uh, the public come back to you and say, look, this is just basically damaging damaging my cars are you seeing complaints and and people like that wanting repair bills done to their cars i i don't uh, i do have some in, in my ward but mm. what i do see uh, as, a, as a as a ward councillor and a, a cabinet member there are more and more calls for traffic calming mm. and there is a there is a difference between the, the actual speed of vehicles and the perception of mm. vehicles there are more vehicles on the road of now. course there are and um, and so the amount of people who do wish to uh, want more traffic calming, which doesn't have to be speed humps or, or those type of things, mm-hmm. um, but it's um, I, I've, I haven't received any personal uh, calls to, to have them removed. Right. Uh, now, a year or so ago, Paul, um, and I know you can't comment on uh, very specific cases, but outside the train station, there was a very, very large pothole. And it was there for uh, quite a... Do you remember this one, Ken? It was absolutely ginormous. There were people living in it, I think, at the bottom of it. And, uh, you know, there was a a tour party, coach party, to come and view the pothole. So how long, realistically, should it take from us reporting the damage to um, having one of your contractors come and repair it? Okay, so there's two categories. Mm -hmm. If it's an urgent people and we're talking surface defects these yeah, days. Yeah. Uh, it'll oh, be, is that what they're called? Surface defects. Surface defects, <laughs> right. Get away from the pot okay. Term, <laughs> Hashtag surface defect. defect. Um, <coughs> we, will, we will be there within 24 hours. Wow. If it's really urgent and dangerous, yeah. the, the officer will sit over that hole with his car until it's yeah. fixed oh, within two hours. Right. Um, we then have a, a 28-day period for anything that's not as urgent as people living in it at the bottom of the station okay and, and so 28 days should be as long as you will be waiting do you now the message we've got though is can they report them to us that, that's exactly because the the, yeah. people walk past potholes mm. we're not everywhere and we really want to encourage people use the website get in touch and make sure it's reported accurately to where it is and there's a lovely app out there as well isn't there, there? Is. Uh, i've forgotten the exact name report my road or something um, where you take a photo and then it sends it directly to you. That's great. Very, very good stuff. But right. We've had, that, we've had that on the council system anyway. Uh, so I, I will report that by a report of problem on our council website. Good. And, and Ken, how's budget looking in terms of uh, road repair and upkeep? Are we still on target for, you know, because everyone says, oh, there's no money to repair the potholes and, and things along those lines. Or, or, and we see the fantastic landscapers you know keeping our amazing roundabouts and uh, and and side verges amazing and then the road is absolutely awful next to it so budget wise are we okay well our roads aren't awful yeah i, oh, I, right. I, 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 I get your drift yeah. it's, uh, you know they're not as pristine as maybe 20 years ago mm. but mm. the but the fact is that the the key message are that are the roads safe mm. and uh, and the answer is yes they are and and the the things like the wildlife ways which yep. is uh, a multi-million pound budget, but that's that's actually come from European funding and combined authority funding as well. The uh, uh, yes, our, our, our budget situation. We yes, we'd like to devote far more money to uh, to our highways uh, budget. Uh, as a council like ours, a municipal borough which has lots and lots of stresses for mm. uh, certainly for children's services and uh, and adult services, social care. So consequently, we have to uh, manage our budgets accordingly. But it's fair to say, a report came to me just at my last meeting a few weeks ago, that our budgets are on course and uh, 
and, and we're in a good place at the moment. Great stuff. Right then, Paul, quick fire questions. Go on, are you ready? What's going to happen when Aldi goes live on Homer Road? How are we going to manage the increase of traffic going uh, left down to that box junction? You probably don't know, but we've got what's called an urban traffic control centre situated in Soho Hill Town Centre. It monitors all the traffic signals around town and it balances congestion. It has a priority system around your A roads, your B roads, and then your local roads. So Homer Road mm-hmm. is at the lowest end of the priority, unfortunately. Oh. Now, Aldi have chosen to develop on a road that already is going to be difficult to manage yeah. and get them out and give them priority. So you'll find it be interesting to see how it operates. But at the moment... The, the modelling for the traffic in the town centre say it will cope. Okay. The, the peak period for Aldi will not necessarily coincide with the peak four to five o'clock exit period. Um, do, does Don't forget, we also brought Waitrose onto Homer Road that's successfully right. into yes, the borough. Yes, we it's saw gone that. very well. Hmm. No, I've got no reason to suggest that uh, Aldi won't do exactly the same. Okay, and does the timing uh, does the timing modify for the traffic light system via that via your centre? So is it, is it automated or is it somebody sitting there going, there's suddenly uh, an influx of traffic? Let's change the timings. Yeah. So there's, there's two systems. Okay. There's, there's the background scoot system, which is a technical bit of software that runs the system and it links all of the town centre junctions together and they run various planned times yeah. throughout, the, throughout the day. And then there's a, there's a person watching the town centre because we do have incidents. Now, you talked about the 45-minute delays across the town centre. Yeah, that's right. Our network is very sensitive to what happens on the, the parallel network on the M42. Yeah. M42, M40, once that network struggles... And people dip off. Unfortunately, in, yeah. we are the alternative route, so we do see in the peak period some additional flows come through associated with incidents on the motorway network. And, and that being a smart motorway as well, is that something that we take into consideration when we're designing our... our f- sort of flow through and things well that the smart managed motorway network was designed to get more capacity out of the m42 by sure. using the hard, hard shoulders and different reducing speeds. the vehicle speeds mm. vehicles can travel close together so we actually get more traffic on there it created more reliable network as well by reducing the number of collisions which we're all supportive of and we work very closely with highways england and their control center down at quinton okay uh ken bus lane uh, coming down past the hospital from uh, the top junction, why is that um, not time based? Because you know that could really help some of the f- the f- uh, flow down from Load Lane and and places like that when there's only maybe two or three buses running in that zone. I think part of the problem is is, is the confusion because mm. there are areas, as parts of Birmingham, you you have one side in the morning and one side in the afternoon. I'm not too sure how, how that works. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a bus lane. Yeah. We want to promote public transport you know, for, 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 for buses, coaches, uh, taxis, sure. that type of thing. It's, um, and it's clear, it's unambiguous, but you, know, you don't drive in a bus lane. Sure. If you don't want to get a fine, That's you right. don't drive uh, in a bus lane. Camera-based. I'll come back to you on that one, if I can help you. Because it obviously predates Councillor Hawkins' time but yeah. joining us as yeah. the Highways Cabinet member. It, Load Lane has the highest frequency of bus services in the borough. Right. Uh, It also had the highest level of unreliable journey times. Now, we created the Load Lane bus uh, bus facility because it came with pedestrian crossing facilities. It came with more than just a bus lane to create that reliable journey time. Now, actually, Load Lane is is an unusual road in as much as it has five peak periods. It doesn't have your traditional two peak periods. Because of JLR. But there are three shift changes on JLR. So you've got traffic coming from five in the morning through till 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm, The mm -hmm. normal seven till seven wouldn't have coped for that peak period of traffic. So that's why we took the positive decision to make that 24 hours a day. Wow. Okay. I understand why that is. And of course, the last 20 yards as you come into the main roundabout by Voco St. John's um, puts us back into a dual carriageway to go round to that roundabout, Mm -hmm. doesn't it? Okay, are there any, uh, what's the master plan, Paul? How how are we looking forward? Because like I mentioned earlier, we've got Sprint coming online. Um, Where's the infrastructure going to come for the modification into electric vehicles, for instance? How, what are you doing as a team to make us leave our cars at home and, uh, you know, change our 
a, a mode of transport. What, what's your message? Okay, well, e-cars e are definitely going to be the future. We've already mm -hmm. seen the government policy around that. So yep. We will be, over the next three to five years, looking to bring forward a, a charging network to support it. But the, the technology is moving so quickly at the moment, the range of those vehicles have gone to a point where you may not need so many remote charging points because you can charge your vehicle at home. Mm. But what we are trying to look for is to make sure that those people that want an electric car and are living in communities that aren't suitable for off-road charging that we then bring forward some off some on-street charging first as a priority so we're looking at uh, well we have submitted a bid to try and bring that type of technology to solid hall excellent stuff bus networks all uh, looking good and uh, happy Tra i use the train a great deal so um you know apart from the other day when the tree fell on the line in uh, what not yeah we we're all a bit stuck for a little while but other than that it, it it's generally very good isn't it it is really just weight of traffic yeah so yeah, we've got a very good local train service network yeah. in, in Solihull, hall and we certainly need to promote it it has as a mode of transport it's got some spare capacity in it so people need to try it as has the bus network by all means give it a go it had a uh, a poor reputation a few years ago yeah. but the quality now of the of the x services that are out there um on time, real time information. You've got Wi Fi on the buses, mm -hmm. comfortable seats. Give it a go. Okay. Ken, any uh, further messages for your uh, constituents or anybody out in the neighbouring wards um, in our local area? What's, you know, what's the council's plan? Well, the council's plan, as, as Paul said, you, you've got to have a strategy for, for coping because, mm. you yeah, know, we are building more houses because we put puts on us. But of course, that will mean more people, more cars, etc. Mm. Um, but it's how we how we plan for that, and and the, and the key message is that when, whenever we develop, um, whether it's the, the new uh, the new LD, uh, new development down Homer Road, or even new housing, it's infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. That's what people want to see. I think it's also we need to sort of ensure that communicate more about what, what are the problems. Uh, and how people can find out more about their their journey, but behaviour behaviour change is important. We we really got to promote more cycling and walking, certainly the short distances. Okay, thank you both very much for joining us today. We appreciate you coming in to spread this message, and it's important, I think, that the wider community hear at the planning level, because, like I said to begin with. We need to understand the, the bigger picture, don't we, rather than just why am I sitting in traffic every morning? Yep. And uh, I appreciate your time, gents. Um, could we make this much more of a regular thing? Could it be more of a, uh, a conduit for disseminating information? It certainly could. There's lots of themes we can talk about that we can share around road safety messages. Yep. It's yep. really key. Readiness for winter. Some really key yep. themes around yep. readiness for winter. Uh, yeah, by all means, happy to do that. OK, well, thank you very much, gents. I appreciate your time. Why don't you head across to uh, solihullradio.com, click the on-demand service, and then you will be able to find out a little bit more about what's going on in our local community or head across to guest links and you'll find the link across to the council website there so that you'll be able to see what's going on. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.